listeners, and welcome back to Everyday Health Stories, the podcast where we explore the fascinating world of medical science through the power of storytelling. Today, we're diving into something that honestly surprised me when I first heard about it. We all know intermittent fasting has been celebrated as this incredible lifestyle for better health, weight loss, improved metabolism, and even clearer minds. But what if I told you it might be affecting something a little unexpected, like your hair? That's true, Anna. I've been waiting to discuss this. Intermittent fasting is such a popular trend, but there are layers to it that most people don't consider. What we're talking about today is one of those fascinating twists. Right? When I first read about this, I thought, no way. How could fasting impact hair growth? But as I dug deeper, I realized there's some solid science behind it. And it's not just theory. There's actual research showing how fasting might slow down hair regrowth. It's pretty compelling. A group of researchers in China at Westlake University conducted a study that really sheds light on this. They looked at how fasting affects hair follicle stem cells, the little powerhouses responsible for growing new hair. And let me tell you, the findings were eye-opening. But before we get into the details, I want to remind everyone, this podcast is for informational purposes only. It's not a substitute for professional medical advice. If you're dealing with hair loss or any health concerns, be sure to consult your healthcare provider. Absolutely. Okay, so here's what I think is interesting. We hear so much about the benefits of fasting, how it cleans up damaged cells, helps with inflammation, and boosts energy. But no one ever talks about this kind of stuff. That's because the focus is usually on the positives, like improved metabolic health or anti-aging benefits. But fasting is a powerful tool, and like any tool, it can have effects we don't anticipate. Right, and the effects on hair growth seem to be one of those unexpected things. So let's break it down. From what I read, these researchers found that fasting actually causes stress in the hair follicle stem cells. That's correct. Here's what's happening. During fasting, especially when you skip breakfast and lunch but have dinner later in the day, your body shifts from using glucose, its primary fuel source, to burning fat. This causes the release of free fatty acids from the liver, These free fatty acids sound beneficial at first, but when those fatty acids get metabolized by cells, they produce something called reactive oxygen species, or ROS. Oh, I know about ROS. They're those molecules that can damage cells, right? That's exactly it. They actually trigger oxidative damage to mitochondria and hair follicle stem cells. They're like sparks flying around inside the cells, and if there's too much of them, it overwhelms the cell's ability to repair itself. Hair follicle stem cells are particularly vulnerable to this kind of stress because they're already working hard to regenerate new hair. This damage is the root cause of hair loss during fasting. Oh no, so it's like they're being overworked and undersupported at the same time? That's a great way to put it. And when those stem cells experience too much stress, they start to shut down, a process called apoptosis, which is essentially programmed cell death. Yikes. And this happened in the study with mice, right? Yes. The researchers found that mice on intermittent fasting regimens had significantly delayed hair regrowth. While mice on a normal diet regrew their hair within about 30 days, the fasting group showed only partial regrowth after 96 days. Wow, that's a huge difference. But it wasn't just mice. They tested this on humans too, didn't they? They did. A small clinical trial with 49 participants showed similar results. People who followed an 18-hour fasting regimen experienced slower hair growth and thinner strands. Okay, that's wild. But does this mean fasting is bad, or is there more to the story? It's definitely not as simple as saying fasting is bad. There are ways to protect your body from these effects while still reaping the benefits of fasting. All right, let's get into that. I'm still wrapping my head around the idea that fasting, something we've all been told is so good for us, could actually slow down hair growth. I need you to help me understand this a little more. Why are hair follicle stem cells so sensitive to fasting? It all comes down to energy priorities, Anna. When you fast, your body has to make decisions about where to direct its energy. Think of it like a household budget. When money gets tight, you focus on essentials like food and rent, and you cut back on luxuries. So hair growth ends up in the luxuries column? In a way, yes, because hair growth isn't critical for survival, so the body diverts energy to more vital organs like the brain and heart. That means the cells responsible for growing hair, your hair follicle stem cells, don't get the same level of support. And that's when the trouble starts, right? 
because we talked about how fasting shifts the body into fat burning mode and that creates those reactive oxygen species. That's right. Hair follicle stem cells are already working hard during the growth phase of the hair cycle. So when ROS levels go up, it's like adding fuel to the fire. The oxidative stress overwhelms them and instead of regenerating new hair, they shut down. Okay, but I've got to ask, why does this happen to hair cells and not say skin cells? Great question. It's because hair follicle stem cells have a very specific job. They're programmed to regenerate rapidly during the growth phase. Skin cells, on the other hand, are much more stable and don't rely on the same high bursts of energy. That makes hair follicle cells uniquely vulnerable when the body is under stress from fasting. Wow. So it's not just that fasting puts them under stress, but also that they don't have much of a safety net to fall back on? Exactly. And this is why we saw such dramatic results in the research. For instance, the mice in the study didn't just experience slower hair regrowth, they had significantly fewer active hair follicles overall. That's wild. And this is the same thing that was seen in humans during the clinical trial, right? Yes. In humans, it wasn't as extreme as in mice, likely because our metabolic rates are slower, but the results were still notable. Participants on an 18-hour fasting regimen had thinner, weaker hair strands, and the growth rate was reduced by about 18%. Okay, so this really makes me wonder, what can people do if they want to keep fasting but still protect their hair? Is there a way to prevent this release of free fatty acids from the liver? Thankfully, there are strategies to prevent the release of free fatty acids and protect your hair follicle stem cells while still benefiting from fasting. Normally, when you fast, your body depletes glycogen stores in the muscles over about three days, and only then does it shift to ketosis, using ketones instead of free fatty acids for energy. The good news is, you don't have to wait three days to get there. By taking MCT oil, particularly C8 and C10, your liver can produce ketones directly, bypassing the need for prolonged fasting. These ketones stabilize blood glucose, lower insulin levels, and reduce oxidative damage to the hair follicles. Wait a second, what exactly is MCT oil? I've heard about it, but never really understood what makes it so special. MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides, which are a type of fat commonly found in coconut oil and palm oil. What makes them special is that they're metabolized differently from other fats. Instead of being stored in your body, they go straight to the liver, where they're quickly converted into ketones, an alternative fuel source for your body. This makes MCT oil incredibly helpful for fasting because it allows you to produce ketones without waiting for three days of glycogen depletion. That's amazing. It sounds like MCT oil is a game changer for fasting. And for our listeners who want to learn more, we're planning an entire episode on MCT oil, its benefits, how to use it, and how it fits into different health strategies. Stay tuned for that one. It's going to be fascinating. So Dr. Reddy, by using MCT oil, you're not just reducing oxidative stress, you're actually preventing it by replacing free fatty acids with ketones. Does pairing it with food make this effect stronger? Yes, definitely. Pairing MCT oil with protein, like eggs, during breakfast blocks the release of cortisol and epinephrine, two stress hormones that spike when you skip breakfast. This stabilizes blood glucose levels and reduces hunger, further lowering the stress on your body and protecting hair follicle stem cells from oxidative damage. Got it. Are there other ways to minimize the impact of fasting on hair? Absolutely. Timing your fasting window can make a big difference. If you want to protect your hair, skipping dinner instead of breakfast is a better option. When you skip breakfast, cortisol and epinephrine spike to help your body compensate for the lack of food, leading to the release of free fatty acids. This creates oxidative stress, especially when combined with a busy workday. In contrast, skipping dinner allows your body to wind down naturally in the evening, reducing stress levels and protecting your hair follicles. Pairing breakfast with MCT oil and protein ensures your body shifts to ketones for energy without the damaging effects of free fatty acids. Oh, I love that. It's like giving your body a little more time to recharge before diving into the next fasting cycle. That's right. And if you're fasting for longer periods, make sure you're eating nutrient-dense meals during your eating window. Focus on healthy fats, proteins, and plenty of vegetables to support your body's repair processes. This is so helpful. So fasting doesn't have to be an all-or-nothing decision. You can make some small adjustments to protect your hair and still enjoy all the benefits. That's the mindset I always recommend. Fasting is a powerful tool, but like any tool, 
you have to use it wisely. Speaking of using it wisely, I'm sure people listening right now are wondering, what do I do with all this information? How do I apply it to my life? That's the big question, Anna, and I'm glad we're tackling it. The good news is, fasting doesn't have to come at the expense of your hair or other aspects of your health. There are ways to get the benefits while avoiding the downsides. All right, let's get into it. What's the first step for someone who wants to keep fasting, but also protect their hair? The first step is understanding your body's limits. Not everyone needs to do long fasting windows like 18 or 20 hours. For many, a 12 to 14 hour fast can still offer metabolic benefits without as much stress on hair follicle stem cells. And that shorter fasting window is easier to stick with too, right? It feels more manageable. Right. Plus, shorter fasts are less likely to cause the oxidative stress that leads to hair follicle damage. Okay, so shorter fasts are a good option. What about during the eating window? Are there specific foods people should focus on? Yes, definitely. A nutrient-dense diet is essential. Make sure you're including plenty of antioxidant-rich foods like leafy greens, nuts, seeds, and brightly colored vegetables. These help combat the oxidative stress caused by fasting. And hydration, right? We touched on this earlier, but dehydration can make everything worse. That's right. Staying hydrated is critical, especially during fasting. And if you're doing longer fasts, adding electrolytes can be a game changer. A pinch of sea salt in your water can help maintain electrolyte balance. I love that tip. It's so simple but effective. Now, you mentioned earlier that timing is important too. Can you explain that a bit more? Of course. Timing your meals around your circadian rhythm can make a big difference. Eating earlier in the day, when your metabolism is more active, is much gentler on your body than eating late at night. If you can, have your largest meal earlier and keep your evening meal light, or skip it altogether. So it's about working with your body's natural rhythms instead of against them. Exactly. And if you're fasting regularly, it's also a good idea to include refeeding days. Days where you focus on nutrient-dense meals to help your body recover. That makes so much sense. And what about people who are already noticing changes in their hair, like thinning or slower regrowth? In that case, I'd recommend adding foods that specifically support hair health. Biotin-rich foods like eggs, salmon, and lentils are great options. And if needed, a vitamin E supplement can help, but always check with a healthcare provider first. Okay, so let's recap. Shorter fasting windows, lots of antioxidants from food, staying well hydrated, timing meals earlier in the day, and incorporating refeeding days. If you're fasting, consider starting your day with breakfast that includes MCT oil and protein to prevent the release of free fatty acids and protect your hair follicle stem cells. And skipping dinner instead of breakfast can help reduce stress hormones like cortisol and epinephrine, which are linked to oxidative damage. Did I miss anything? You've got it, Anna. The takeaway here is to avoid triggering the release of stress hormones like cortisol and epinephrine. When these hormones spike, they prompt the liver to release free fatty acids. Unlike ketones, which are a clean energy source, these free fatty acids cause oxidative damage to the mitochondria in stem cells especially those in hair follicles. Over time, this damage can lead to hair loss. That's such an important insight. So the key is keeping those stress hormones as low as possible to protect the hair follicles, right? That's right. And the best way to do that is to avoid fasting in the morning. Start your day with a healthy breakfast to stabilize your blood sugar and prevent stress hormones from spiking. That's interesting because most people think skipping breakfast is the way to go with intermittent fasting. Are you saying breakfast could actually be the secret weapon for hair health? Yes, actually. You can still enjoy the benefits of intermittent fasting, but by shifting your fasting window to skip dinner instead of breakfast. Having breakfast gives your body the energy it needs to stay calm and balanced throughout the day, while skipping dinner allows you to fast overnight with less stress on the system. I love that. So it's about working with your body's natural rhythms instead of pushing against them. Yes. A good breakfast, paired with skipping dinner, is a great way to practice fasting while keeping stress hormones low and protecting your hair follicles. That's such a practical and balanced approach, Dr. Reddy. I'm sure this will resonate with so many of our listeners. It's actionable, science-backed, and easy to understand. And with that, we've reached the end of today's episode. If you found this discussion helpful, and I'm confident you did, make sure to subscribe to Everyday Health Stories you'll get notified of new episodes, access to exclusive content, and become part of a community dedicated to making positive changes, one story at a time. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Don't forget, 
Your health journey is all about balance. Fasting can be powerful, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. And speaking of pieces of the puzzle, in our next episode, we're going to explore how fasting impacts more than just your hair. We're diving into its effects on tissues like your skin and muscles, and what that means for healing and aging. It's going to be a great one, Anna. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. So join us next time for Everyday Health Stories. Until then, take care of yourselves and your hair. See you next time, folks. Bye for now.